Welcome to this video. This is your important information guide for cash employment services. The purpose of this video is to explain in detail some of the program requirements for the MFIP cash assistance program, what choices you have with employment service providers. As you listen to the program's presenter, you will hear and see slides with information regarding our programs. If you have questions, your financial worker can answer them at your face-to-face -face interview. Thank you and hello everyone. I'll be describing our programs on this video and want to point out that there is also a resource and form section located on this disc. There are some forms within that section that you can view, print, sign, and complete for your intake appointment. If you cannot print this information, copies will be available for you at your intake interview. Your application process will not be complete until you also attend your intake appointment and return all requested verifications. The following is some information that you will need to know before we get into the programs. With that introduction, now let's get started. First, we'll talk about your rights. You have the right to privacy. This means that we cannot share any information with anyone unless we have a written release from you. You have the right to reapply when your benefits stop. You have the right to know why if your application is not processed promptly. You have the right to know the program rules for each program you are applying for. Each program has different rules. You have the right to choose where and with whom you live. You have the right to appeal. You have access to free legal services. You have a right to file a complaint. Next, we need to inform you about your responsibilities. You must report changes to your intake worker right away. After your case is open, you must report changes within 10 days. Please refer to the Responsibilities page of your application for a full list of changes to report. Each time you use your EBT benefit card, you state that you have informed the county of changes and we have assumed that you have received your benefits. The county, state, or federal agencies may check any of the information you give us. If you don't cooperate, you may not be able to get assistance. If you give us information you know is untrue or we get information you did not report, we will investigate you for fraud. The state or federal quality control agency may randomly choose your case for review. If you do not cooperate with them, your benefits may stop. Next, we are going to talk about your private information. There is a form section on this DVD that describes how your private information may be used and disclosed and how to get access to your private information. Now we are going to give you information about the Minnesota Family Investment Program, MFIP for short. MFIP is a program that expects, supports, and rewards work. This program is limited to 60 months in a lifetime. Months used in other states must be reported and could be counted towards this lifetime limit. There are some instances where a family may be able to get an MFIP extension. If you feel that you have used 60 months or are close to using 60 months, you will need to talk to your financial worker at your interview as there is paperwork that needs to be completed. MFIP rewards work. One of the program requirements means that you must pass the initial income test. If you have received income from a job and you pass the initial income test, a percentage will be deducted from your gross income. The remaining income will be deducted from your MFIP grant. If you have income from another source, that income may be deducted dollar for dollar from your MFIP grant. Examples of this other income would be child support or unemployment benefits. If your income decreases, you could be eligible for more MFIP. You will need to report and verify that your income has decreased to your financial worker so that they can determine if you are eligible for more MFIP. MFIP supports work. Once approved for MFIP, we refer all eligible adults to employment services. Employment services will send you a meeting notice for an overview that you are required to attend. At that overview, they will talk about the rules for employment services that need to be followed and any benefits and services they might have to offer. MFIP expects work. Most participants will be expected to do job search or be working. Keep in mind that each month the cash assistance portion is issued, it counts towards your 60-month limit. You will need to work with employment services and child support. 
Unfortunately, if you choose not to work with child support or employment services, your MFIP grant may be reduced. This is called a sanction. If you have used more than 60 months, you will want to talk to your financial worker about how sanctions affect your MFIP. The following sanction rules are for people who have used less than 60 months. When you have had one employment services sanction on your case, your MFIP is reduced by a percentage. If you have had a child support sanction on your case for the first time, your MFIP is reduced by a percentage. Any other sanction after the first through the sixth sanction by either employment services or child support means that your cash assistance is paid to your landlord and the rest of your grant is reduced by a percentage. When you get to the seventh sanction on your case and the sanctions do not need to be consecutive, then your case may close. Please talk to your employment counselor or child support worker to see what you need to do so your case does not close. If your case closes, then you are not eligible for MFIP for 30 days. You will need to reapply and then comply with employment services or child support before your MFIP can be redetermined. If there is a child under the age of one in your household, then one adult can claim an exemption from employment services. This means that adult would not need to work for those exempt months. If you would like to take this exemption, tell your financial worker so they can see if you qualify for this exemption. When MFIP ends, you may be eligible for additional services. Transition Year Child Care is available when cash assistance ends. One of the criteria for this program is that you must have received and been eligible for MFIP three out of the last six months. You must also meet the income limits. If you are interested in transition year child care, please talk to your child care worker so that they can determine if you are eligible for this program. Most MFIP participants have the opportunity to receive employment services from a community provider that specializes in helping people find and keep jobs. MFIP participants have the option to select the employment services provider they want to work with the most. However, there are a few exceptions that you should know about. We will do our best to meet your ES provider requests. You should know that if you worked with an employment services provider in the past, you will probably work with that provider again. Also, most people who are under the age of 18 must work with St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. If you are under age 22, you will likely work with Hired. Hired provides specialized services for young parents on MFIP. And finally, if you have been on MFIP 54 months or longer, you will work with Ramsey County Workforce Solutions. You will receive the Ramsey County MFIP Participant Employment Services Provider Choice Sheet. The Choice Sheet has information about each of the employment services providers you can choose to work with. Please look over the choice sheet and pick your top three provider choices. Please mark your top three choices in the boxes to the left of the listed agencies. Please mark your top choice as number one, your second choice as number two, and your third choice as number three. Please do not write X's or check marks. Please be sure to write numbers in order of preferred choice. Once you have completed the form, please give it to your financial worker. Also note that when this video is over, you can view the resources and print the necessary forms for your appointment if you have access to a computer. If you do not have access to a computer, you can contact your financial worker for the forms. The following is a list of forms that need to be completed, signed, and returned to your financial worker. The Notice of Privacy Practice General Packet. Complete Part A at the top of the form. Make sure you sign Addendum A at the bottom of the form. Or you can print the form in the form section on this DVD. This is to acknowledge that you have received the packet. Please also complete the following. The Family Stabilization Services Checklist. The Employment Services Provider Choice Sheet. We conclude this video with a thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope that the program's presenter information just reviewed has been useful. 
we understand there's a great amount of detail. Always remember your financial worker can answer any questions you may have, as our programs and staff are dedicated to serving you.